Hello, hello. I think I'm live. I'm not sure yet. Yes, you're live now, Facebook tells me. <laughs> so this is my very first time having a scheduled life. The previous times that I've gone live were like just in the spur of the moment. So like very spontaneous moments. And um, today I decided to schedule, well, actually a few days ago, decided to schedule this live to bring some insights and to teach you one or two little tools. So hello everyone, it is so good to be with you. And um, it's just really a pleasure. It's my first live of the year, as I said. I hope you are feeling well. I hope that you had a wonderful start of 2023. I know I surely did, I definitely did. And um, hi, April, so good to have you. It's nice to see a message because then I know I'm actually live. <laughs> so yes, it's, um, it's really, it's been quite a two weeks for me. So I spent the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023 in sisterhood in the United States to um, visit many of my sisters and you were one of them as well april it was such a pleasure to see you live for the first time we've been chatting and we've been on calls together on zooms and but then to see someone live is just oh it's such a pleasure so for me these two weeks were really bathing in sisterhood that's what it felt like it felt like a a warm bath you know when you're like enjoying it when you can feel every part of your body just warming up, soaking in the warm water. And it also felt like having um, a bath bomb, right? Is that the right word? You know, those, those bowls and then you put them in the bath and they start bubbling and you have those smells coming up and you, you feel the trickling on your, on your skin. And that's what it felt like. We, we laughed together. We, dance together, we cried together, we held each other, we, well, we didn't really sleep, but we went to bed together, that sounds really weird, okay, let me explain that, <laughs> we've been, we've been like on a big bed, and then with many sisters all together, just, just being, being together, being close to each other, and for me, I'll be honest, that physical closeness so the ability to feel someone else's body very, very close to me, <sighs> that was really good. And I really, really, really needed that. It was absolutely wonderful. We also did a game. Maybe this is actually the first teaching or the first um, little tool I can give you. We did a game that Ellen came up with. I don't know, Ellen, if you're here already. Um, but Ellen came up with this game of um, doing the alphabet. So going through each letter of the alphabet and then for each letter, come up with a word that means a lot for you. And we did it in the frame of the new year. And um, so each of us came up with a word with that letter that we wanted to embrace for 2023. Um, so of course, the S was of sisterhood and there were some other S's as well. Um, the, bra the B for me was about bravery and badass because that's what I want to embrace in this year. So anyway, if you're together with friends, sisters or whatever friends or loved ones that you're in together and you're looking for a fun activity to do, go through the alphabet and just use each letter to come up with a word that means a lot to you. And you can ask a specific question for that. It's so much fun and it's even much more fun if you do it all together while laying in a bed. <laughs> but of course you don't have to. <sighs> so you can probably tell from everything that I'm sharing right now how absolutely exquisite this vacation was for me, how wonderful it was to, again, to be in sisterhood and um, that's maybe the second tip of my life, which I didn't even think about. I was, I'm thinking about one learning that's coming next, which is about where do you land on? But thinking about sisterhood and friendships, I really want to encourage you the coming year to embrace it. Hi, Diana, so good to have you with us. I was just talking about sisterhood and how important it is to embrace those relationships that give you so much energy. 
And by the way, Diana, you're on my list for 2023 uh, to go and see you, visit you again in Philadelphia, this time a bit longer than last time. Um, so yeah, go for that. So intentionally nurture those relationships with the people that light you up inside, you know, those people that when you see them, you just want to, to hug them. And the other person also wants to hug you when there's so much connection without without even having said a word when there's no small talk you know what i mean when you directly go very very deep like when april picked us up from the airport it only took five minutes before we were in a very juicy inspiring deep um private and and really honest conversation so that was beautiful it's um so you know those connections you know what I mean. I don't think I need to explain it more, but what I want to say is that with those people that you have those type of connections with, don't hesitate. Don't go and tell yourself like, yeah, but I don't know if she really wants to spend time with me or I don't know if they really appreciate me as a friend the way I appreciate them or maybe they have better things to do. They're so busy. I'm not going to bother them, right? So make sure, make sure, make sure you let go of all of these inner critic thoughts and phrases and whoever is the person or the different people that you want to connect with that lift you up, do it, go for it, reach out to them. And um, because that connection is where, that's where it happens, right? And being your own best friend is all about giving yourself that space and giving yourself the gift of sisterhood or again any other type of relationships where you feel so good being with that person so hi ellen good to see you as well say it sister yes i'm saying it <laughs> i'm saying it reach out to the people in your life who mean a lot it can be family it can be of course spouses loved ones it can be friends it can be sisters um reach out don't hesitate. Just do it because it's going to mean the world to you. I know that. And that is what your own best friend is all about. I mean, think about what I did in the past 12 months. I've visited the U.S. four times. Oh, I need to do like this so my hand is visible. I visited the U.S. four times. And mind you, the first time I came to see you, Ellen, and we had never met in person. And I came to see you with my suitcase and you said you can stay at my place for a week and i was like are you sure it's like yeah i'm sure so it took a bit of courage and bravery from my side to to do that i was like maybe she's gonna kick me out after two days because she's had enough of me or maybe i'll i'll be a burden to her because she has her own life going on she's an artist right ellen creates these amazing uh, paintings and she also does photography and I do none of that. So I'm like, ah, anyway, so my inner critic was going, I'm like, what the hell? I'm just going to do it. So I went and I visited Ellen for the first time. Um, that was already um, a year ago. I think if I'm right, it was on December 26, 2021. Anyway, I did three other trips. And I remember on those trips, I was also thinking like, who will want to, to see me, right? If I come over, like, People have their own lives, right? Sisters, we connect online, but what about the connection um, altogether? So my inner critic was going wild and yet I did it. I did it four times and I'm gonna do it again, <laughs> maybe more than four times <laughs> in 2023, you never know. So go for those relationships, go for sisterhood. Don't let your inner critic tell you otherwise. So I'm landing on the topic of today which is all about where do you land on? So we're not gonna become pilots in this life. Although maybe we are, maybe we're becoming the pilot of our own life, right? Of being our own inner best friend. Maybe that's what it is, interesting. Let me know how, that's, how that analogy resonates with you, like being the pilot of your own life. Hmm. So, I landed back, yeah, being, being the pilots of our own hearts, April, I love that, definitely. And Ellen is doing the love you sign, absolutely. 
So why am I talking about landing and, and pilots and uh, being the pilot of your own heart, um, as April says so beautifully? Um, so I landed back from my wonderful sisterhood trip on um, January 8th, I think. I took off on the 7th, and I think I landed on the 8th, if I'm right. Um, and, and I needed, I really needed to land. So even though I landed physically, it took a while for my body, even though my body was there, but for my body to adapt, for my, for my heart, for my mind, for my soul, to fully, fully land in, in my own house again, in my own world, in my own reality. Sometimes it feels like those wonderful times um, away is like, is, is not reality, it's like a dream. When I think back of it, it's like, oh, that was like a dream, that was so good. Um, so yeah, you know that feeling when you have had a wonderful, amazing experience, whether it's a whole vacation or it's just a day out or even one hour, one wonderful hour, and then you come back to reality. Um, so I'll be honest, I had a hard time. So I don't do jet lags. I'll just, I'm super clear on that. I don't do jet lags. I go to bed and I sleep at the right time. So that works. But I think my heart was having like a major a major jet lag. And um, the reality I came home to was fortunately being with Charlotte, my daughter. Um, as most of you know, she is 17. She's actually turning 18 tomorrow. And she's moving out. She's moving out. I was going to say next year, but she's moving out this year to study. She's going to spread her wings and um, go to Ireland and um, definitely move out. So I had a week with her um, because now she's back at her at her dad's. As you know, we're divorced. Thank you, April, for the happy birthday. I will pass it on. She'll be so, so loved. She will feel so loved. That's wonderful. Um, so yeah, I came home and and she was she was there with me. So I had a I had a full week with her. And that's really where the what do you land on? Where do you choose to land on comes in because I had so many emotions. I had so many thoughts. I had so many things going on in, in my mind, in my brain, in my heart, in my body. I was, I was, I think I was a bit overwhelmed and um, I guess mostly overwhelmed by sadness because thinking of her moving out, it makes me sad. Like I will miss her so much. It's just, I cannot, I cannot even think about it because it really 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 makes me really sad and it feels like like a you know a wave of sadness coming over me and at the same time I know she's going to have the time of her life I'm delighted for her I'm actually so proud of her and yet when she's with me I feel I need to enjoy every little moment with her I need to connect as much as I can I need to make every moment a beautiful moment. I need to create new memories. So it makes me feel a bit restless. And honestly, for those of you who have a teenager or have had a teenager, or you've all been teenagers, teenagers yourself, um, when you're a teenager, you don't want to be with your mom per se. I mean, it's nice and it's fun, but you want to be with your friends, right? You want to go out, you want to have fun and she wants to study a lot because she wants to make sure she gets um she gets in in the island uh, universities in ireland um so yeah so i want to connect so much with her and i'm also thinking back like oh my god she's turning 18 tomorrow have i done enough have i created enough memories and then i remember that when she was only four months old i went back to work and now I'm like, how could I even do that? You know, I dropped her at daycare for four days a week. Well, three days a week in the first few months. But and now I'm regretting that. I'm like, oh, I want to turn back time. I just I want to have more time with her. That's what I want. And that makes me really anxious. But also I'm like, she's going to go to Ireland. This is a major step in her life. She is so brave for doing that. And, and I'm amazed. I'm amazed of her. And I'm secretly a bit proud that she is actually 
following me a little bit because I love traveling, right? And and I've done the same when I was her age. So yeah, I'm also secretly proud. Yes, April, it reminds me, brings you back of dropping off Bryson. Oh, those moments when you have to drop off your kids or your babies, or even if they're older, they're still your babies. They're still your, your little ones, right? It hurts so much. It really does. So you can picture that when I came back a few days ago, oh, actually it's nearly two weeks ago, I was like overwhelmed with all these different feelings, all these different emotions. And I just felt like, Bleh. <laughs> I don't know how to put it in words. Maybe you can help me. What is a Bleh feeling that I was having? What was the emotion I was struggling with? Um, I think I can only, yeah, the, the, the thing that comes to mind is like, Whoa, like you wanna throw it up, like you just wanna get rid of it. Um, it's pain, but it's also excitement and it's also regrets. And you know, oh, a last little thing. Can I even share that? Some days I'm gonna whisper. Charlotte's not even here, but still, I need a feel to whisper for this one. Some days, I even think, what if she doesn't graduate from high school? What if she has to do another year? And she's gonna be with me another year. Okay, bad mom, I'm a bad mom, right? I cannot say that. I cannot say that. And I, I'm not saying it. I'm just, there's this little part of me, this little, little tiny part of me that wishes that. And yet I don't wish that, of course not, of course not. I want her to graduate with honors, I think, as you call it in the US. I want her to go to Ireland, but my little heart doesn't want her to. Oh. And yeah, April, it's the yummy cocktail of all of the emotions. Oh. I like how you say yummy, because sometimes it doesn't feel so. It feels like one of those cocktails that's really sour. You know, I'm not very much of an alcohol cocktail drinker. But I know I've had those ones where you take a sip. Maybe it's, is it margarita where they put like salt on the rim? And where you take a sip, you're like, oh, you know, your face goes like that. <sighs> so anyway, I am um, I am on the, <laughs> on the sidetrack with the cocktails. Um, so the question is, what do I land on? What do I land on? Yeah, it's sweet and sour, Diana. Exactly that. It's sweet and sour. And you choose, you can always, you always have a choice to land on the one thought, the one image, the one perspective that you want to land on. Because we as women, you all know that, have this ability to hold so much. We can hold so many different emotions, like what I shared, like, like, excitement like a bit of resentment like uh sadness like pride like we can hold all of them we can hold all of those perspectives and yet sometimes it's hard when you have to hold all of it we only have two hands and i don't want to hold like one or the other i want to bring them together and what i really want to um help you do more and more in your life if this resonates is to choose to intentionally choose like you always say Alan to deliberately choose what you land on what is the one perspective or vision or emotion maybe that you want to land on so for me what I'm landing on with Charlotte is that this is such an important phase of her life I am so incredibly grateful to witness her going through it. And I am proud of being her mama. I'll be honest. I'm really, really proud. And that's what I'm landing on. I'm landing on the excitement for her. I'm landing on that, that she's growing, that she's becoming this young adult. That's what I'm landing on. And underneath there is sadness. But I'm taking that into the landing because you know why I'm sad. I'm sad because I love her so much. And my love is in the landing, is on the thing that I'm landing on. And 
if I would not be landing on this, my mind would continue going rounds and rounds and all of those different thoughts and beliefs and emotions and all of it. And they will come during this year, believe me, they will come back, right? But indeed, Diana, it's what you're saying. It's like a smooth, soft, beautiful landing. And even though it's smooth and soft and beautiful, it can also be hard because it can also hurt. But that's okay, because if you land on that, if you land on the love that you have, that I have in this instance for Charlotte, and um, that's helping me. So that is me being my own best friend to choose what I land on. Again, knowing that the other things are there too. They're under the surface. They're there too. It's okay. It's all good. I am choosing to land on this. I am being a badass best friend of myself to do this. It takes courage. It does. It takes bravery. It takes compassion for yourself. So that is what I wanted to teach you about, about landing. Like, what do I choose to land on? That is really the major learning, I feel, what I wanted to share with you today. And I also realize that this might sound very easy, like on paper or on video or in the chat, like this is what I choose to land on. And yet it requires a few other steps. The first step is to be aware of your emotions, to be aware of those perspectives that you have. The second thing is to be able to look for other perspectives, to be able to reframe. And then what it also requires is to give yourself the level of compassion and kindness and love that you give to others so easily to allow yourself to go through this process and land on what you want to land on, what is really best for for you, right? So that's why, because of all these other things that are involved as well, because it's not so easy to choose what you land on, I am giving a self-love party on February 13th, because you might know February 14th, which is amazing, which is all about Valentine's Day and celebrating the love we might have for another person. And yet, and yet, February 13th, that's where it all starts because that's the International Day of Self-Love. And I am holding a self-love party. Yes, yes, we're going to dance, we're going to dance, we're going to dance. That's how we will start this party. And I will share three tools with you. One will be about emotional awareness, being aware of your emotions. Second will be about reframing. How do I even enrich myself with different perspectives and thoughts? Because sometimes we're just, we're just stuck in one specific emotion or, or belief. Um, and then third tool will be self-compassion. It sounds so easy. And yet at the end of the day, don't we all, we're like hard on ourselves. Like, oh, did I say the right thing in that meeting? Or wait, did I really smile at that person? Maybe I was a bit harsh at the person in the supermarket. I shouldn't have done that. And my friend hasn't called me back today. Oh, did I do something wrong? Anyway, we all have those that inner critic and those, those negative thoughts and words, we can be so harsh on ourselves. So self-compassion will be the third tool I will teach on the self-love party on February 13th. So please, 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 well, actually, please, not to please me, but to please the, yourself. So for the love of yourself, join the self-love party february 13th it will be on zoom so you need to register here can i put this in yay i just did it i just did it so you register there for um the self-love party it will be on zoom at 2 p.m eastern you figure out your own time zone 2 p.m eastern I'll be there for 90 minutes. We'll go through the tools. We'll be in sisterhood. Yes, we will dance. We will hold each other. We will, we will have a wonderful time together because being your own best friend forever, ah, that's where it starts. And then we can go into Valentine's Day the day after with, with um, how do I say that? With, with an enriched or a nurtured heart. Maybe that's the word, with a nurtured heart, right? We need to nurture ourselves first. That is what BYOB VFF is all about. Be your own best friend forever. <sighs> so with that, I'm super excited. I can see, Ellen, that you're really, really excited to learn those tools. Thank you so much for sharing. <gasps> Diana, your birthday is on February 12th. Oh, my
my goodness. Oh my goddess. That's amazing. Okay, so I know already which song we're going to dance to at the start of the self love party. That is just amazing. That would be a wonderful gift to yourself. And for you, it's the gift of time, Diana, because you're incredibly busy. It's just like you're this wonderful superpower mama. Um, so yeah, if you can give yourself the gift of 90 minutes or maybe just an hour, whatever works for you, it would be such a pleasure to have you here. Um, so yeah, anything else that comes up for you when you hear the self-love party on February 13th or the landing part or the dancing part. Monica told me during my sisterhood trip that a dance a day keeps um what was it well that's what i made of it but anyway she says you need to dance every day and i make of it a dance a day keeps the depression away or the difficult stuff or whatever so yes we're gonna dance and uh april i can see that you're dancing with me i wish i could play music now but i don't think we can do that in a live because um facebook might remove it because i don't have the rights and all of that anyway that brings me to another thought oh maybe i can put that out to you um, who is interested in having a weekly dance party? So like on top of February 13th, I'm having this idea of doing a weekly, I guess not a live, I think a weekly Zoom because then I can see you. Yeah, Diana. And then we can just all dance for like 10 minutes, whatever. Because as Monica says, a dance a day keeps the depression away. So if you're in for it, let me know. I might start that. Yes, April is saying yummy. And April, you can also bring uh, bring Amber, of course, and Bryson, right? You can bring in your kids. You can, yeah, Diana, you can bring in your girls as well. Ellen is raising her hand. Yeah, I want to be there for the dance parties. <laughs> You'd love to dance. Beth is here as well. Hi, Beth. So good to have you. So I can see a lot of excitement for um, the weekly dance party. Wonderful. So why don't we kick off this new thing, which I've just invented now, of a weekly dance party. And we kick it off on February 13th with a self-love dance to BYOBFF party. Okay. It's too long of a name, but you get the thing. <laughs> yeah, we want to dance with Emmy, right? And also with Cece. Oh, that's going to be amazing. I'm so looking forward to that. Okay, with that, my beautiful, beautiful, lovely souls, thank you so much for being here with me or for listening to the replay. And if you're listening to the replay, please just put in your comments in um, um not in the chat but in the comments because i would love to hear what you're taking away from this live it was such a pleasure to be here with you i'm wishing you an amazing rest of your afternoons for you as you can see for me it's evening so i'm going to make myself some dinner and um yeah thank you so much again for your attention and i am sending you lots and lots of self-love hugs take very good care of yourselves today my loves okay ciao ciao bye 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 everyone